Okay, let's take a look at this corner joint here and see how this works. We've got 1 8 7018 Code Arc MR from Lincoln Electric. So now that we've got the arc established, we want to pay attention to our rod angle and our travel speed and watching the puddle carefully to make sure that it's full but not too full and that it sags down the side of the weld. So keep your eyes on the toes of the weld and move along in a fashion that keeps the joint full but not too full and don't travel too fast or we'll get undercut. Okay, ran pretty smooth and pretty good. Let's chip off the slag and see what it looks like. Okay, in reality, we're going to want to let that cool off a little bit more, but I'm going to say that looks pretty good. Next item we're going to take a look at here is, is I've got some 1 by 1 by 1 8 carbon steel angle, about 12 inches long here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and clamp these together. I've got my vice grip 6Rs here, a couple of tools that I purchased when I was pretty young welding student and they've worked pretty well for me over the years here. Uh, I really like to use these a lot. Keep plenty of pairs of these in my toolbox and whenever they're on sale I always grab a couple more. So there we've got them clamped up and we're set up and ready to go is we're going to make an attempt at the seam weld down the upper edge of the joint here. Once again we're going to use a piece of our 1 8 code arc 7018 MR from Lincoln Electric here. Uh, we're going to use the same machine settings that we had previously. Uh, we're going to give this a try. So I've placed the electrode in the electrode holder as such. Okay, here we go. Put your hood down and away we go. Okay, now that we've got the arc established, we want to continue on down the joint, maintaining a consistent travel speed and rod angle. We want to maintain about a 15 to 20 degree rod angle in the direction of travel and having that rod 90 degrees and directly over the groove. So we want to continue on and make sure we don't put too much metal in there and have it spill over the sides and down on the angle. Okay, let's see how we did. Once again, for sake of time, I'm chipping the slag off here pretty quickly, but I'd suggest if you were doing it, to leave it there a little bit longer, 30 seconds to a minute. I find that if you start hitting on it while it's still hot, usually the slag wants to grab right to the surface. So that looks pretty good. Okay, the next item we're going to take a look at here is a piece of 3x3 three three square tubing with a 3 16 wall. I'm going to guess this is probably a piece of A500 uh, square tubing here. Uh, and this is a piece of 1x1x1 one by one by one carbon steel angle. Uh, once again, I'm going to use my vice grip 6Rs to clamp these together and hold those in place. Okay, so that's securely in place there. We're going to go ahead and weld it in the horizontal position. So once again, I'm going to get a piece of my 187018 Code Arc MR. Okay, I'm going to get myself positioned such that 
I'm going to be able to have a nice smooth consistent travel across the entire length of the joint making sure that I hold the proper rod angle and travel speed during the duration of the weld. So I'm going to want to hold the weld relatively small and I'm going to want to move along in a smooth and even fashion. So let's give it a try here and see how it goes. So here we're going to want to move along a little bit faster than we have in the flat position in the previous weld. We want to keep the weld just a little bit larger than the width of the electrode, but not too much wider, keeping a close eye on the upper toe and making sure that we're not causing undercut or not filling the joint up completely, but not so much weld that it's spilling over. Okay, set down the rod, set down the electrode holder, make sure it doesn't come in contact with the ground. And then let's chip that off. Take a peek at the weld there. Once again, I see very, very little splatter and a nice, clean, uniform weld. Okay? So that taking a look at some of the capabilities of the stick welding side of the MIG Weld 200S. So if you see what you like, you might consider purchasing one of these. Come at a good price. Check on our website, longevityinc.com. Now we're going to take a look at that flare V groove that's on the back side of that square tube and angle iron joint we just welded up. We want to travel at a speed that's fast enough to keep the joint full and also alternating side to side and watching the toes and making sure that they fill up and they're full complete. Hold about a 10 to 15 degree rod travel angle. We also want to make sure that as we approach the end, we don't want to just run off the end and leave a big divot. So as we approach the end, we want to shorten the arc and then proceed back onto the weld opposite of the direction of our travel. When the puddle's full, then we go ahead and break the arc. Okay, let's remove the slag and see what we've got. Once again, allowing the weld to cool for a moment helps the slag come off the surface. But I'm going to say, that's a pretty good looking weld there, using the MIG Weld 200S in the stick welding mode.